Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today I'm just going to quickly show you how how to basically install a deleted CPU into a motherboard, because I've seen a bunch of people be like, do you need to re-glue? Do you need to do this? How do you do that? It's not really that complicated a process, it's just a pain to write down six times a day. Uh, well, not quite that many times, but basically a lot of people ask. So this is how I do my deleted CPUs. Uh, this right here is an i3-7-350K. Why am I doing it on this and not the 7700K? Because this happened to not already be installed in a system, well, in a motherboard, and I can't be bothered to... Like, this motherboard is just easier. So, yeah. Uh, so, as you can clearly see, I have the IHS and the CPU separate. And from here, you just go straight for the motherboard. already have the motherboard socket, you know, open. So, at this point, you just put the CPU into the socket without the IHS. That's all just, you just put this first. Uh, you apply your thermal paste at this point. Um, I mean, you could also do it out of socket. I just do it in the socket because quite frankly, holding a CPU without any kind of support around it is a bit of a pain. Uh, for your thermal paste application, I spread my thermal paste out of paranoia. Uh, I have done testing like thermal performance of spread versus dot versus line versus X versus all that. Um, they all perform exactly the same as, as long as you don't put way too little thermal paste, which way too little is a risk with like the dot method. If you go for X or any of the more intricate patterns, uh, you end up with really massive amounts of thermal paste and you're always safe. Um, dots, sometimes you put a really little dot and you just get like a tiny circle in the middle of the CPU. That isn't good for performance. Um, so yeah, you just put, throw the IHS on like that. And this is the sort of kind of tricky part. So if you try to close the socket right now, what's going to happen is the IHS is going to slide down. So one way you can deal with that is you can slide the IHS up a bit and then, you know, it'll slide down and center itself. I prefer to just hold the IHS where I want it. So, and I try to get it aligned so that the tabs holding the IHS, like right now, one of those tabs is like barely, like very, very close. Like this tab right here is basically not making contact with the IHS. So I'm gonna have terrible pressure, like I have a lot more pressure on one side than on the other. So you'll want to, um, you know, make sure that those are lined up properly and just hold it in place as the, it's still gonna slide around a bit, but yeah, hold it in place and that's what it looks like if you do it properly. So you have both tabs more or less ha making the same amount of contact. My IHS is a little bit, you know, wonky, but it, not a huge deal. It's just mostly you don't want the tabs slipping off the edge of the CPU, uh, off the edge of the IHS, because um, that would suck. As I have, actually haven't had that happen where one of the tabs didn't make contact at all, but I imagine if you did that, you could end up with, like, the, the IHS sort of going upwards out of the socket, which would be unpleasant for the silicon underneath. I imagine you could actually crack the uh, edge of the silicon. So I'm just gonna wipe that off because my fingers aren't exactly clean right now. Uh, let's go for the thermal paste, install the water cooler and uh, install the AIO and I'll show you that this does actually boot up. In terms of thermal performance, this is fine. Um, go X method for that. Throw the AIO on it. And just to prove that it works, I'll boot it. I'll also need a stick of RAM, so. This motherboard, being ITX, is a bit of a pain to, pain to mount coolers on because the capacitors around the socket always get in the way. So, well, with some coolers, they really get in the way. I'm not sure, like, I've had weird thermal paste spreads with this cooler so far, so. But I think that's because the mounting plate was loose or something, so. Hopefully this time it'll be Halfway decent, and let's get that RAM stick installed. I'll do both because I don't know which channel is the one that works on this board. There we go. Uh, at this point, we are ready to boot. It really isn't that complicated. There, and it fires up. So yeah, that's how I do all of my uh, CPUs when I install them, uh, delitted. As you can kind of see, the temperatures in the BIOS are a bit high. 
But that's because uh, BIOS is actually like more load than idle in Windows. I don't currently have an SSD hooked up, so yeah. Uh, like I don't have an OS hooked up to this system right now, so I can't go in OS. But yeah, that's that's how you uh, install your CPU. You just put the put the CPU with the substrate in, um, either with thermal paste already on it, or you put the thermal paste on it when it's in the socket. Either is fine. Then you throw the IHS on, then you close, and then you just close it. And you have to make sure that the IHS doesn't slide all over the place. That's really all it is. Um, no need for gluing or any kind of that stuff. It's easy. This is the easiest way. If you're thermal paste under the IHS, like the reason why I do it this way is because for liquid nitrogen, you need to replace the thermal paste after every few runs. Well, actually, basically, you should do it after every run <laughs> um, because the running thermal paste on liquid nitrogen just really, really screws up its physical properties. So, yeah, this is how I do it because I need to be able to replace the thermal paste. There's no problem with doing this for daily use. It's not like the IHS is going to slide off or something because the uh, tabs of the socket do hold it very, very secure in place. Um, yeah, you know, you, you can relid the CPU, but it's like if it's already delidded, if you want to change thermal paste or test anything, I think it's better to just have it like this. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment down below about anything that isn't quite clear to you. I think this should be way simpler than most of my usual content. And uh, that's it. Goodbye.